Hi friends! Today, we will learn about image formation in the case of convex lenses. So, let's start. We will first recapitulate what we have learned about convex lenses before we learn about the image formation. We learned that the lens has two spherical surfaces bulging outwards, and this is called a convex lens. It is thicker in the middle when compared to the edges. We also learned some terms related to the convex lens. The first one was center of curvature. Convex lenses have two spherical surfaces, and the center of sphere of which these surfaces are part of are called centers of curvature of the lens. We denote them as C1 and C2. The central point of the convex lens is called its optical center, which is denoted by the letter O. The distance between the optical center and the center of curvature is called the radius of curvature. It is denoted by the letter R. And a straight line passing through the optical center and the two centers of curvature is called the principal axis. Rays of light parallel to the principal axis falling on the convex lens converge at a particular point on the principal axis, which is known as focus, or the focus of the lens. The distance of the principal focus, or the focus, from the optical center of the lens is called the focal length. Convex lenses are called converging lenses because they make the parallel light rays converge at the focus. We also learn the rules for determining the image formation in the case of a convex lens. A ray of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction from the convex lens passes through the principal focus on the other side of the lens. A ray of light passing through the principal focus after refraction from the lens emerges parallel on the principal axis. A ray of light passing through the optical center of the convex lens emerges without any deviation. We also learned the difference between real images and virtual images. A real image is the image which is formed when the light rays meet at a particular point, and a virtual image is the image which is formed when light rays appear to meet at a point but do not actually meet. And a real image is always going to be inverted, so the image is upside, whereas a virtual image is always going to be upright. Real images can be projected onto a screen, but virtual images can never be projected onto a screen. When studying the image formation, we will consider three rays. First is parallel to the principal axis, second is passing through the principal focus, and third is passing through the optical center, and we have already studied about them. We will now learn the image formation with this lens. We will consider six different cases where the object will be located at infinity, beyond the center of curvature, at the center of curvature, beyond the focus and the center of curvature, at the focus, and finally, between the focus and the optical center. We will study the image formed by convex lenses in all these six cases. Here, we have the setup with a convex lens where the optical center will be marked as O. The first focal point is labeled as F1, and the second focal point will be labeled as F2. The first center of curvature is labeled as C1, and the second center of curvature is labeled as C2. Our object will be called AB. The first case of image formation is when the object is placed at infinity, or a great distance from the center of curvature. In this case, rays coming from the object AB will be parallel to the principal axis and will intersect each other at F2. All the rays will refract and converge to the principal focus at the other side of the convex lens, and the image formed at F2 will be highly diminished and called A-B-. 
So the image formed will be real. That is, the rays are actually converging at a point. It will be highly diminished or very small. And we know real images are always going to be inverted. So it is an inverted, diminished sized image. Case two is when the object AB is beyond C1 or beyond the center of curvature 2. The ray coming from the object will be parallel to the principal axis and refract and pass through F2. The ray which emerges through the optical center will emerge without any deviation after refraction and the ray that passes through F1 will refract and become parallel to the principal axis. In this way, these three rays will meet at a point we will label as B dash. Now, make a perpendicular line from B dash to the principal axis, and you will get point A dash on the principal axis. And this image produced will be called A dash B dash. It is a diminished real image. When the object is placed at C1, the ray coming from the object, which is parallel to the principal axis, will refract and pass through F2. The ray that emerges through the optical center will emerge without any deviation after refraction. And the ray that passes through the F1 will refract and become parallel to the principal axis. In this way, these three rays will meet at a point we will label as B dash. Now make a perpendicular line from B dash to the principal axis and you will get point A dash on the principal axis. This image will be called A dash B dash. So the image formed at C2 is a real image that is inverted and is also the same size as object AB. Now, the fourth case is when the object is lying between C1 and F1. The ray coming from the object, which is parallel to the principal axis, will refract and pass through F2. The ray will pass through the optical center and will then emerge without any deviation after refraction. And finally, the ray that passes through F1 will refract and become parallel to the principal axis. In this way, the rays will meet at a point we will label as B dash. Now make a perpendicular line from B dash to the principal axis and you will get point A dash. So the image formed is called A dash B dash. The image formed beyond C2 is a real image, but of enlarged size. Now we have the next case, which is our fifth case. And in this case, the object is lying at F1. Let's see what happens here. The ray coming from the object, which is parallel to the principal axis, will refract and pass through F2. The ray that passes through the optical center will emerge without any deviation after refraction. These rays will meet at a point at infinity. And so the next image will be formed at infinity, but it will also be enlarged. Next is the sixth case, which is when the object lies between F1 and the optical center. The ray coming from the object, which is parallel to the principal axis, will refract and pass through F2. The ray that passes through the optical center will emerge without any deviation after refraction. These rays will not actually meet at any point, but they will appear to meet at a point if produced backwards. So, the image will be formed on the same side as object AB. It will also be enlarged and virtual. That is, the rays will not meet, but they will appear to meet at a point so that the image will be erect and virtual. We have learned image formation in the case of a convex lens. And so we have also learned six different cases of image formation with the help of this lens. Now, let's revise it all in a quick fashion. 
If you place the object at infinity or a great distance from the center of curvature of the lens, the image formed will be highly diminished and point sized. It will also be a real image or an inverted image. Now, if you place the object beyond C1, the image formed will be between the focus and the center. It will be diminished, inverted, and a real image. If you place the object at the center of curvature, the image formed will be of the same size, and it will also be a real image. If you place the object between the focus and the center of curvature, the image will be formed at infinity, which will be highly enlarged, real, or inverted. If you place the object at the focus, the image will be formed at infinity, which will be highly enlarged, real, or inverted. Lastly, if you place the object between the focus and the optical center, this image will be formed on the same side that is behind the object AB. It will be an enlarged and virtual image. It will also be erect because in this case, the rays will not actually converge at a point. They will only appear to converge at a certain point. So, this friends was image formation in the case of a convex lens. Now, can you answer a simple question? Why is a convex lens called a converging lens? It is because of its ability to converge a parallel beam of light on a point called the principal focus. Now, let's discuss the uses of a convex lens. Convex lenses are used in spectacles, cameras, and microscopes. The lens in the human eye is also a convex lens. A magnifying glass is another example of a convex lens. Now, let's perform an activity to show that a convex lens is a converging lens. For this, we need two things, a magnifying glass and a sheet of paper. Hold a magnifying glass in your hand. Direct it towards the sun. Focus the light from the sun on a sheet of paper. Obtain a sharp bright spot that is the image of the sun on the paper. Hold the paper and the lens in the same position for a while and keep observing the piece of paper. The paper begins to burn, producing smoke. It may even catch fire after some time, so be careful. This occurs because the parallel rays of light from the sun are converged by the convex lens at the sharp bright spot on the piece of paper. The concentration of the sunlight at a point generates heat, and this causes the paper to burn. So, convex lenses are indeed a converging lens. Now, let's discuss what the power of a convex lens is. Power of a lens is defined as the ability of a lens to converge or diverge light rays. Power of a convex lens depends on the focal length of the lens. Therefore, the power of a convex lens is also defined as the reciprocal of its focal length. For example, a convex lens of short focal length causes higher convergence than one with a longer focal length. So, by increasing the focal length, the power of a convex lens decreases. It is usually denoted by the letter P. The power of a convex lens of focal length f is given by 1 over f. The SI unit of power of a convex lens is diapeter, and the SI unit of focal length is meter.